Hey guys, I've got a training game on the board. I'm playing Chess Noob Ash, who is a Chess Bootcamp Club member on chess.com. Anyone can join that. And so this is a training game. This is unrated, 15 plus 10. And I'm going to play... I'm not going to play the Vienna or Danish Gambit. Let's play a normal game. So here, the idea is that I'm going to play it really from both sides of the board. So Ash will get to watch this video and get the the coaching from it. So now let's we'll, we'll keep swapping between white and black. So all very, very normal now. The, the most common move obviously is knight c6 because white is attacking this pawn and we're defending it. Okay, so now I'm gonna play the Italian and we'll see what happens. So the Italian game here, I'm putting one attacker against f2. Ash says, thinking between the Petrov and knight c6. Thanks for knight c6. <laughs> okay. And this is the, the uh, Gioco Piano. The quiet game. So here, black is just really mirroring what white has done. I think there's a few options here. c3, d4 might be a plan. You can obviously cast it straight away. Um, I'm going to play c3 and see what happens. Let's see if I can play the whole game from black side of the board. I don't know. I've never done that before. But it is interesting. Okay, now we have uh, three knights out. So this knight is now looking at this pawn. And th that's a decent move because I now can't... Um, well, if I play d4 now, I guess I'm attacking the bishop, but he's got one, two, three attackers on that square, and I've got one, two, three defenders in the form of the queen. Now, let's say I castle, I allow black to take. I have queen here, attacking the knight, and the only defense, is, well, there's d5, there's also f5, so I don't really like that idea. So now I need to defend my pawn. I'm going to move my queen. I'm going to put my queen here. And it's important, you know, we're on move five here. It's important not to neglect these opening moves. I think uh, one of the one of the reasons why beginners struggle a lot is by putting too little thought into the opening moves. You think, oh, it's just a case of getting my stuff out into the board and then we start playing chess. Well, no, because there are very, very often tactical opportunities and risks and threats and stuff, even at this point in the game. So just looking at this now, to attack the bishop, he's got one, two, three attackers. And from there, I would actually have only one two defenders because my queen's now moved. So I'm going to castle as well. So Ash is rated 12.55 right now in rapid and playing a solid game. So let's just review. I'm attacking this pawn. It's defended once. This pawn is pinned, has to be noted. Might want to play rook e8 at some point. I want, might want to play rook e1. I need to get my remaining minor pieces out, and this pawn is in the way of that knight because I've moved, because I played c3. Now he's beaten me to the punch. So let's count. Two attackers, two defenders. Pawn takes, knight takes. Hmm. Doesn't really change anything about this move either, because it these all these three attackers on that square are unaffected if we exchange on here. However, how do I feel about allowing black to take? And you should always consider both directions of an exchange. Black takes, I can't recapture the queen because he's got two attackers on there. Okay, so he's overwhelming this pawn. And he's attacking my bishop. So one thing I can do is drop my bishop back. That's candidate move A. Candidate move B would be to take the pawn. So I've got two ideas. 
I don't really want to move my bishop because it's on a, its favourite diagonal. <coughs> Looking down at the king, so let's just let's go ahead and capture and play on from there. Still want to move this pawn, even if I have to move it to d3. That may be all right. He's playing a good game. I'm a pawn up for the moment, but he'll probably recapture with the knight. So what else can I do with my knight? Can it come around this way? Not really. I'm kind of regretting the c3 move, but I kind of trip in it. Ooh! Oh! Wow. Interesting. He's pushed on. Attacking my knight. But I can take his knight. So that's the first thing I want to look at. I take his knight, he takes mine, I get a pawn. I'm, and then he recaptures. I think that's absolutely fine. I take his knight, he takes my knight. I take his pawn. I'm up two pawns at that point. He then recaptures with the B pawn, and he's got himself doubled and isolated C pawns. I don't see what's not to like about that. Plus, I'm clearing the way for this bishop with this move. I like his ambition, but I think, in fact, it's not working. So let's let's do that. Let's play that. Now he has to recapture. Otherwise, he's just down material, right? But also, look, now my queen's actually defending this pawn. Wow. Was that just a miscalculation? I like the thinking a lot. And now, of course, I clear the way for d4. Finally, I get to play d4. And if he takes here, I probably won't use a move. And this is one difference that I notice between me as a 1600 player and me as a 1400 player is... It's kind of a sense of figuring out what really matters in the game. And at this point, I would rather push d4 because it's an important move. Right? If Let's say pawn captures here. Queen captures is not an important move. Well, yes, it attacks the bishop, I suppose. But I think what's more critical is to gain that control of the center, release this bishop. So that's what I'm going to do now. And you see, this pawn's still there. That pawn's going nowhere. And plus, at any point when the queen attacks that, I can attack the rook. But right now, I'm playing this move with tempo. So the bishop's going to have to retreat one way or another. Okay, so the bishop's gone there. Let's just make sure. So now, I have options. I can develop my bishop and pin the knight on the queen. We had a big session on pins yesterday. Just boot camp live. And with any pin, you have to say, is this a pin with purpose? And yeah, it, it binds one of Black's pieces. Um, there's also Queen takes C6. I like the idea of developing my Bish. Could even just develop there. I mean, that's just kind of solid. That's a tall pawn position. Um, but I think it's important to develop my Bishop. Yeah, so I'm going to play that. So let's just review this this sequence here. This move was, I think, um, a mistake. I think it was misguided. I, I, I like, like the idea of it, but when you calculate it through, so all you have, all I had to do was go. I take knight, and then basically pawn takes knight is is forced because otherwise that's going to be down a whole piece. And then what happens? If I do that, what's my opponent going to do? Okay, so because if I do this, if he takes, I can take, then queen takes, then pawn takes, and it's like, ah, and this is what you have to play through in your mind. Queen takes, and suddenly, suddenly, black has no central pawns. Yes, he gets this pawn back. Now I kick the bishop with tempo. Now this bishop's now become very bad indeed. 
I actually think the bishop should have travelled this way, probably to here, because now, look, it's facing a pawn wall, and then its own piece, its own pawn here on c7, is blocked by this pawn on c6, and he's proposing another trade. Now, I've got a couple of options here. I think this is fine. And if pawn takes, then he's got himself another isolated pawn on e6, right? Um, now, there is then a risk of this knight moving with the discovered attack by the rook on the queen. Okay? Another option here is simply queen takes c6. I get my second pawn advantage back. If bishop takes bishop, my queen is then defending the bishop. That's absolutely fine. And I'm ramming my queen down his throat there as well. And this pin is still maintained on there. I think that's that's great. Bishop takes, that's all right. And then I again, I can take here. Uh, then attacking the pawn with my queen. But I kind of, I like this move, I think, a bit more. Apologies for the background noise. Now spring cleaning. And now, if I take, takes, queen takes, oh, not there, but queen takes again on, C, on e6 with check as well. And I'm maintaining this pin. Now, important thing that we've learned about pins is that very often the, uh, the threat is worse than the execution. So maintaining this just makes life harder for your opponent. If I was to take and queen takes, that just releases the tension for my opponent. Plus, black would then get to connect his rooks and his queens move further up the board and is in a better place. But this bishop is bad. Okay, now I'm going to recapture with my queen. Remember, the knight is still pinned. Bishop is awful. So what he should be doing now, maybe c5? You need to be thinking about, it in the middle game, how good are my pieces? This knight is okay, although it's currently on ice. This bishop is poo. That is one poo bishop. Now if here, I'll probably just take... Ha, huh, okay. So what he's done here is he's actually broken the pin on the knight and is defending the knight. But I am two pawns up at this point. So what's most important now for white, and this is what you need to be thinking in the middle game. I'm two pawns up. Exchanging material is not a bad thing for me. I probably want to get my knight in the game, and with my knight, the way that I think about it, it's a tip I learned from Simon Williams. If I could pick this knight up and drop it anywhere on the board, where would I like it to be? And I like this square. I want it to be on a square where it's defended. And so the next question is how to get to there. So we've got like one, two. Okay. Ash is now saying moving my bishop to b6 was a mistake, I guess. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So before that, are there any serious issues? Another thing I could think about is kind of trading on here. I'd love to recapture with my queen and force this pawn to take and open up his king. But that's not really on right now. I can't really see a way. Because my queen's currently on a light square. I can't really attack that square in any way. So I'm going to bring my knight out now. Yeah. So he's got these isolated pawns as well. And the bishop is still bad. So what he should be doing is thinking, how can I improve my bishop? And c5 would do that. Takes, takes. Bishop takes or queen takes. And suddenly this bishop's back in the game. You're back in the game. Right now, bishop's awful. And I'm like, I'm going to play my knight to here any second. Um, with, maybe with the idea of coming around, around there, I'm not sure. I might also centralise my rooks. Just generally thinking about the plan of improving your pieces, reinforcing your position as you go on. So pawn's defended twice, that's defended twice. So my opponent actually has coordination. The queen's defended. The knight's defended twice. But the queen is kind of stuck defending this knight because if the queen undefends the knight, the only remaining defender is g7. 
in which case I will definitely be tempted to snatch off that knight. And part of the reason for that is because I've got a light, uh, sorry, a dark squared pawn chain towards the centre. Okay, good, very good, very good. You've played that now. I'd be tempted to push d5 here and try and lock up the position. Um, however, then he would have two attackers on there. So if d5, knight takes. I can bring my knight to, not to, to here, and attack his queen. Yeah, I'm not sure. I could just simply take, but that actually drops the knight. No, it doesn't. Bishop defends. Good. Um, if I allow him to take, I recapture the pawn. Okay, I'm just going to put my knight here and tie everything together, right? That knight really tied the room together, did it not? And this guy peed on it, Donnie. One of my favourite scenes from one of my favourite films. An absolute masterclass in comic dialogue, by the way. The rug scene at the beginning of The Big Lebowski. So this was a valued... Yeah, man, it really tied the room together. So this was a valued... Um... What tied the room together, dude? Were you listening to the dude's story? I was bowling. And you have no frame of reference here, Donnie. You're like a child. He walks into... Walter! What are you talking about? Huh? I could go on. It's a great scene. Alright, how are we doing? Okay, he's taken. He's taken. Now, I, I'm... I've got three options. Obviously, Queen is out because Bishop takes. Right? You can't... If you've got a sequence of exchanges, you can't start with your highest value piece. The only options are knight takes and pawn takes. Or nothing at all. I could do something completely different. Um, I'm inclined to take with the knight. It's not where I wanted to put my knight, but now I have no pawn here defending that square. So we have to rethink here. It's putting my knight in the centre of the board. I could even trade th here and then take. Uh, yeah, yeah. So my advantage here is I have two extra pawns there. If I take the pawn... Go on, let's take the pawn. One thing I like about this is it makes this pawn completely clear. Because there's no black pawns on the C file or the E file. I don't think I've blundered there. So now what I want to do, 100% I need to bring my rooks in somehow. Okay. You attack my queen, huh? You attack my queen. Knight's defending that. Knight's defending that. Not that. Queen's also defending that for now. It's attacked twice. So I'm thinking this or this. I think those are my only options, really, to maintain my protection of the pawn. And my gut says central. So go with the gut. Respect the gut. So yeah, trading off rooks now would be absolutely fine for me. I'm slightly nervous about this bishop hanging out there in, in the opponent's side of the board. Is this weird playing playing a game from the the wrong way round? But it, it feels very natural. Maybe we should all try it. Okay, he's brought a rook in. Now that I have a pawn on here, by the way, I do have this. I do have this, huh? Hmm. I'm just tempted to move one of my rooks to an open file and try and trade off. He's grabbed both open files. I'm just going to move a rook. 
I'm not going to think too much about it. What's my bishop doing? Nothing much. It's not pinning the knight anymore because the queen's moved out of that to defend the knight. Classic map pattern, by the way. Half of me thinks about, could I just put my bishop back there as a tall pawn? Um, okay. Trade a room. No worries. Still two pawns up. I have a B pawn, I have a D pawn, and you don't. Ash. Unfortunately. Because Ash was rash. And tried something. It's, it's quite often a, a, a warning sign. If you find that in your games you're going, I'm going to try this. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I'm going to try it. Unless your instincts are telling you that whatever your opponent does, it's likely to come out well. Okay, so now he's moved his bishop to attack my, my, my rook. Um, yeah, unless your instincts are, are telling you it's, it's a good idea. Um, don't, don't try it. If, if you haven't calculated that it's likely to work, what are you doing? Okay, now, this is my first idea, but then actually rook there could be a thing. Um, maybe I just need to keep my rook on the back rank. See, if I do this, and he does that, I guess I can move my knight back. No, I'm going to lose material. I'm going to lose material that way. Okay, rook here. Yep. That was a decent move, though. I, I like the thinking. That was a better move than the... Than the uh, Ashes Rash Pawn Push. Just got to learn to calculate this stuff. You see, with that Pawn Push idea, it, we're not talking about five, six moves deep. It takes, has to take, or what was it? Takes, has to take, Queen takes, is that better for me? Well, no, it's already not better for you. That's as far as you need to go. It's like, no, nah, I don't see the advantage there. I might even push this pawn forward. Don't know. But I'm, I'm also thinking about the knight here. I like the knight there. It gets in the way of stuff. Might even push a3, b4. And just cut off this bishop again, if possible. I've got three defenders on this pawn. My bishop, because it's dark square and the pawn's on a dark square, could it become a fourth defender if I really want to cement my position here? Make life hard for my opponent. So he's got to try and win. So one thing to be thinking about is, okay, if my opponent had to win, what does my opponent have to do? Oh, okay. Just going to move that. And part of this is kind of psychological as well. I'm just saying to, to, to my opponent now, come on then, what have you got? You've just slightly weakened your position, you know. Here, hmm, if I can get a major piece on here as well, then this pawn is undefended because this pawn would be pinned. So that's an idea. So, for example, could I get my queen to here? Well, not in a hurry. Okay, now what you're doing, now you're attacking this pawn, eh? So I could just push it. I can't defend with the queen there or there. I can't defend with the queen there. Well, I could. No, I'm just going to push it. Pretty straightforward. Still really tempted to move my knight here. I think there's attacking possibilities potentially there. Knights like to be in the centre. And my opponent is too a little bit short of pieces to launch a convincing attack against here. Right, do you want my bishop? Is that the 
Is that, is that what's going on here? Is it what's going on here? Okay, I'm going to play this move. Because this pawn is now defended only by the king. All right. So with things like queen here, I come with threats. My feeling is that these, these training games are really constructive. And if I'm playing from my perspective and also my opponent's perspe perspective when my opponent's lower rated as well. Um, another idea could even be that to think about is sacking the bishop. Sack bishop, uh, g takes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hmm. Feels like a bit of a prod that one, and it, it just begging for Queen F5. Is there anything wrong with Queen F5? Knight in here hits my bishop. I'm not bothered. Let's play it. I'm down to six minutes twenty-two. He's on five forty-five, so there's plenty of time. But now this comes with an immediate threat. F uh, Queen takes F7 check, um, and then. King goes in the corner, knight there, check. King has to go here, knight here, check. Oh, I don't know. No, that doesn't work because you've got rook and queen looking at that square. Well, that's one idea. <sighs> now we don't rush. In fact, in all cases, we don't rush. I can't take with the knight because he's got rook takes and I can't recapture with the queen because the king is actually the final defender. The king can only be the final defender in an exchange. Mm. Now let's think about this. Bishop takes there, pawn takes. Queen here check. Queen can't block. Right? Bishop takes, pawn takes, queen here check. There's no queen block. If the king moves here, excuse me, just shaking off a chess call. Bishop takes there, check here. There's no queen block. So my queen's here, his king's here. This pawn is gone. And there's a pawn here. So. He's in check. He's got one, two, three options. Hmm. Now he says the last few moves I've been moving without any plans or anything. Hmm. Happens. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to delay. I'm going to go here with this idea of then bishop. Oh no, he's got queen takes. Ah, oh, he's got queen takes. I didn't think it through. Ooh, hang on. Maybe that was my plan all along. Oh, you can block with bishop here. It's a check. No, no, there's an. Oh, actually. Oh, oh! Did I accidentally make a decent move? This is a fork with check. Of course, if the queen comes off this file, then bishop takes there is a real threat because the pawn's pinned and then I'm threatening queen takes g7 mate. Hmm. This bishop looks bad again, doesn't it? So I think it was quite important to keep this pawn here and keep it def Oh, he's, he's uh, you grabbed a pawn, have you? Okay, I'm going to throw in this and see what he says. Do you know what he can get out of it? Rook b8. Rook b8. Protect 
text to Brooke and X-ray. Oh no, no, no! It's a, what am I talking about? He's still in check. He's still in check. No, he can't play rook b8. And if this was any other piece, then that would be excellent move. As it is, it would be completely and utterly illegal. Oh no, my rook. So, legal moves. Uh, bishop there to block. Queen there to block. Queen there to block. Or king h7. That's the only options that Ash has right now. And in every instance, I think I win the rook. Okay. Now, I'm going to sanity check this, because I've got 4 minutes 39, 38, 37. I've got to win the rook, eh? This is nice fork. I confess it was an accident. My idea was bishop takes h6, but then saw or queen defended it. But you know what? It happens, right? You need to be open to <coughs> looking for these things, looking for these ideas. Okay, so he, he says he also saw the um, this idea. So he was looking at this, this, this quite blunt idea of that, but then he saw his queen was defending, that was fine. So now he's, he's down a rook, eh? Hey, take stock, guys. We're up a whole rook. We're up a whole rook. It's time not to panic. Everybody be cool. This is a robbery. Got knight in here. Fox, queen, and pawn, and also threatens to come in here. Misa like this. Also defends that pawn third time. He's got this as an idea, but that doesn't work right now because his queen's under attack. So what are you going to do? You can't go here or here. My queen's attacking his bishop too. So you've got to be careful. There's lots of stuff going on now. Alrighty. Uh, this is an idea. Pawn there, bishop there. I don't see anything wrong with that. Sorry about the background noise again, guys. I also put queen here, check. Which you can block with the... No, he can't block with the bishop because I've got two attackers on that square. Queen here, check. He's got runs away. Um, that may be it. Okay. Now he's attacking my rook. But I've got this now. Up the danger levels. Queen can't take the pawn for many, many reasons. Let's just increase the threat level. And I'm keeping this in my pocket. Sometimes, very often when you spot moves, it, it makes sense just to say, okay, well, let's, I'm, I'm going to put that back in my wallet for later. You, know? you never know. It may come in handy. I've got knight here, double defended. I mustn't forget that my knight is coming in, my rook is under attack. Now, moving there would be a very dangerous thing because he's got a three-way fork. We don't want that. Something like this might be okay, defending that square. My, my bishop's not actually in huge danger, because if he takes, I take, but then we lose stuff. Okay. There, takes, takes, and I lose my rook. That's not very clever. Rook here. I like that. I like rook there. 
Let's do that one. Threatening to come in here. Oh, one thing I, I didn't check for, which is bad of me. My queen's undefended. He's just moved his queen there. It's looking at that. If this bishop could have moved with check, I'd have lost my queen. So I was only thinking about my rook, and I ignored my queen there. Um, by the same token, he can't capture my bishop because he loses his queen. But fortunately, even though my king's on a dark square, these dark square pawns around it are providing cover. Now he's having a poke at my bishop. I'm going to simply, I'm going to trade off. I'm just going to trade off. Right, now his knight's pinned. Oh, hello. Hello. That surely wins the knight one way or another. And he hasn't got any checks. He can't even grab that pawn. Right, done, sold. Oh, I've got I'm up a whole rook. When did I go up a whole rook? I can't remember. And this is now resignable situation, I would say. Now, black has to get lucky in order not to lose this game. And he's also down to 1 minute 10. So whatever happens now, I think I can simply take the, take the knight. Because um, he doesn't have a check. This is no threat at all, because king's guarding all those close squares. He's done that. Is he threatening this, that, back here? Doesn't matter, he, he's out of checks at that point. Need to check, there, be sure there isn't a perpetual, you see, because that's a good way to save a draw, and very, very valid. Okay. King here, and now he's out of checks, because he can't go there. Now, I'm looking at how I can guard this square. Oh, he's grabbed a pawn. Well done. This simply forces an exchange of queens. That's the way to finish, isn't it? He has to take. And that loses. He only saw the check he didn't see the rest of it well well then yeah okay and uh, somebody else has been watching that so yeah i think that was i think that was useful so let's just quickly run through it again for ash's benefit very standard yeah cheers yeah standard and now i'm not sure about this move i'm not sure about in fact let's hit game review let's see what what the game review says see what the computer can add to what i saw and we're only looking at the major issues, really, but I, I'm not sure about that C3 move from my, my point of view. Okay, one blunder from him. I think that was the final move, wasn't it? But you can see on the graph, this um, this big opening was very standard. So we're watching now from White's perspective. Um, Queen E2 is good. Best way to defend? Yeah, it was D3. I was just kind of loath to play d3 because I wanted to play d4 at some point, but okay, d3 was better. Now black's slightly, slightly better. Okay, he castles, I castle, best move. d5, and now we are bang equal. So well done, Ash. You got through the opening um, unscathed, really. And uh, blunder. There you go. That is his blunder. And we've gone from dead zero. Dead zero. He's, he's gained equality in the first six moves, um, playing somebody well, nearly 400 points high rated. He's got to equality, which is really what you should hope for is black. And this is a blunder. Leads to losing material. And best moves, mistake actually, weirdly. What, what should he have done there? Just push, push b6. 
Oh. Hit the queen. And my queen can't go here or here to defend this pawn. That's interesting. There's always other moves. Always other things to consider. And look, it's a developing move. And so, yeah, we hit the queen. The queen can't go there. So the queen has to get off of this diagonal, which means you, you'll be able to capture that pawn for free or just push and capture the pawn later. Right? Plus, it's like, like I say, it's developing. It's putting the bishop on a better square. It's getting you one step closer to connecting with rooks and completing development, right? Unfortunately, you missed that one. Um, but, okay, now I play d4, which was inaccurate. There was an opportunity to win material. Hang on. Um, what, 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 no, no, no. Go back. Go back, go back, go back. Right here, what was the best move? Oh, taking the pawn straight away. Well, okay. So I thought I was being clever by throwing that in. He comes back there. Bishop g5 is best with the pin. Computer like that, okay. And from there on, we, we know pretty much how it goes. There's one more error I think I made here. I'd like to f3, and I'm gonna lose material. Don't, well, I didn't, I don't think, lose material. But anyway, so yeah, very interesting. But you can see this, this was the key moment, right? And I think this was rash. Ash was rash. Um, I know that what the idea is, but you didn't calculate it through, right? So here, it's just a case of, I'm going to take your knight. You take mine, I get a pawn. And look, this pawn is, is an important one as well. So as we went on, takes, 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 takes. And this is the situation, right? We're only, that's only two moves. And now my queen is on a decent square with lots of control and lots of view of the board. You've got doubled and isolated pawns on the C file and an isolated pawn on the A file. And that really meant that your position as the game went on was full of holes and quite easy to exploit. So here I'm only at one pawn. But from there, these weaknesses kind of compounded as we went on. And that stuff matters. So there you go. I think that was a very, very useful and instructive game. Ash, thank you for playing. Um, hope it's been useful for you. Hope it's been useful for everyone else watching as well. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Chess Bootcamp if you haven't subscribed. I'll see you soon.